Hey, what's up, guys? We are just back from Gen Con, and as you know, uh, Battle Spirits put on about three or four different events for the game uh, with some convention center exclusive prizing, uh, one of which we were able to make uh, top two, actually beating the first place uh, winner in the final round. We did end up going X1, and we were playing a nice little brew, especially including a lot of the set two cards, specifically green, as green made its splash here for the first time in False Gods. So we were able to also throw in some of our favorite Gundam collab cards into the deck and really make them work. And they were very impactful and we'll kind of go over a little bit as to how they kind of help the deck succeed uh, in this deck profile. As always, make sure you guys check out the PPG Patreon for uh, supporting content like this and more competitive videos and analysis from the talented Pro Play Games team. So we condense our deck into three different parts essentially and we're gonna go on a play-by-play -play on each one. First, we're gonna cover the spirits. So for the spirits, we started with four copies of this bad boy right here, Shadow Elemental Amethystus. This card's really good because it really just allows you to kind of keep up defensive pressure and cost reduction at the same time. So being able to slam this on turn one, two, three in the early stages of the game will make your purple spells a little bit cheaper and on top of that give you draw this can also thing to note this was my first time actually physically playing with the ex01 cards that this card with three cores can actually attack so at level one it can't attack but at level two it can attack and if they block it and kill it you will get a draw so this card has been really impactful in the deck and i think it's definitely a mandatory you know for now to to play these type of control decks so next is going to be a brand new card from set two it's going to be the Emirant, Emirant Man, Emirant Man. And this one has a when destroyed, place a core from the void into your reserve. So this card allows you to ramp. So as long, it's not only a, a body that you can use to like chump block, but also when it dies, it'll kind of scoot you ahead in the game. Typically control decks before kind of green landed were kind of reliant on the opponent poking them. And if the opponent didn't poke them, you know, poke their life. They wouldn't be able to get ahead and be able to like establish more powerful threats and things like that so emirant man kind of allows you more defensive it could be aggressive right because small drop that you can go for game with also that doesn't cost a lot a bunch of cores and uh, the only thing missing from this card honestly it feels like a, a three cost i think it would even be better because then you can use it for our win condition which we'll, we'll see later but also i'm a rant man's a green card so we are playing multiple green cards just like this one right here this one's matang Matangolo. Matangolo? Sorry, these are all brand new. So this is literally some of these I didn't even pronounce the name. I just slammed them down. But very good card. This is a mushroom man, I guess we can call him. When summon, he can exhaust himself to ramp a core. So similar to the Emirant Man, Emirant Man has to die to ramp you. The mushroom just needs to come in exhausted, which can be a little bit tricky against aggro matchups. Obviously, you want to play bodies and the bodies don't want to tap themselves because you want to keep them, you know, refreshed in order to block. But you know again slower matchups this guy is really an mvp and that's why we only have two copies he will sit on board for the rest of the game he does he is able to get to like a 5k threshold which is pretty cool but because his level one and level two gets him in burning force range we you know we really don't want to max out too many copies of this guy but yeah also good because it's a cost reduction right so like as we keep playing more green spells as we have more green spells on the board and we kind of flood them all our other green spells will become cheaper our next card is going to be Beldegore. Beldegore has been an MVP, you know, since his drop in set one. And everybody's always been trying to abuse this card. Typically, the cards that the decks that can abuse this guy the most usually succeed the most. But yeah, Beldegore is just very powerful because we do play a good number of trigger targets, which are cost four and five cards that we can use to kind of recur him from the yard. He's just very good also to remove pressure. The most important actually is that he's a three cost. So he does allow us to enable one of our win conditions, which we'll kind of go over later. Next is going to be our Dark Knight Aglavale. This guy, you know, we, when we built this deck, honestly, funny enough, a couple months ago before the EX01 dropped, this was a deck that actually ended up winning the the pro tour a similar version or a very unique version same version that we were kind of like working with and and it really uh conceptualized this idea of like dark knight aglavale kind of being able to come down uh going first or going second sitting on a soul core uh being a blocker drawing you a card which essentially what the ex01 cards when they dropped essentially did the same thing arguably a little bit more economic in the early game but 
they were the, both the same idea where you're kind of uh, allowing yourself to put up defense but also cycle through your cards and be able to see more cards in order to see your bombs and things like that as you know your course kind of starts to ramp up you'll be able to play and win but this card being able to have offensive pressure is also a very powerful thing but his defensive defensive capability is definitely something that you know the deck really does prey on and has been really good now unique unique story about the the this promo right here scope powell apparently you know like this wasn't very well advertised and the event didn't have deck lists so nobody really knew but this was a tournament pack card which should become legal this week but wasn't legal for last week for some reason but this was something that we ran and nobody was kind of like you know bad or not it didn't really it wasn't super impactful honestly but i think it's definitely like a cool one over two of in a lot of these decks i think to note that the swift mechanic which is a brand new mechanic that came out in set two does require you to use cores from your reserve and not cores from your dudes so you will have to have at least two if you have max core reduction in your reserve which sometimes does play out because sometimes you'll be able to chump block a creature you know which happened you know i was able to chump block get the cores back from the killed dude then use the swift on the next attack chump block and then tap another dude and then i had netherworld out so i was able to draw a card or a second card so yeah this card's really good i like it in the deck i think it's only like a, a couple of i don't think you max out unless you're really like full-on prey bird or full-on green but really cool card i really like it i like the swift mechanic it being able to be essentially a hand trap you know from hand it was very cool Next, we have the Dark Knight, the Dark Lancer Cavalier. So Dark Lancer Cavalier is definitely one of my favorite cards. It just has the perfect stat line, honestly. For its level 1 and level 2, 3k, 4k is just beautiful. It draws you a card, cycles you through, and most importantly, is a target for your Beldegore, which is super important, as well as the Owl. The Owl is a target for your Beldegore, so you can do some pretty nifty things with those. But yeah, Aglaville, I mean, Cavalier being purple is also great for reduction reasons. Next one, a lot a card that I mean there were there was a little bit of green purple at the event, but nobody was playing the butterfly. And the butterfly I think is probably one of the best cards in the deck, specifically because it is a four cost with the Beldegore. So you can chump this guy off. He's very low BP, so he's always dying. And then you'll be able to, you know, use your Beldegore combos and do all that stuff. So this card, extremely important. I think the when summoned, also not needing to exhaust him. He can come out, he can ramp you a core. This is my ideal turn one going second because now you're playing the rest of the game with an extra core so you kind of just get ahead of your opponent and then you get maximum utility because for the rest of the game you're always up ahead one so heaven slug butterfly very very good honestly one of my mvps and i'm really glad that i was able to include that even though like you know we pretty much kind of like made it up on the fly we had no play testing for this set we were just conceptualizing theorizing and uh, we were able to come up with something really successful so our next one is going to be scaling up to our level sixes is going to be dark bishop baculus of course i think every purple base deck is going to have to play uh, some copies of, of these of these bad boys right here i think two two was a perfect split i wouldn't really go any more or any less or anything like that i think that's good i don't think siding into more is also really needed you have a bunch of draw power a bunch of cycle i think you'll end up finding this and there's some matchups that you just slam down curse dragon without needing baculus because they don't really respect it or know that you play it or whatever because you're not a dedicated purple removal core deck so but yeah these cards are just like always i feel like going to be prevalent and good so it's a nice little reset button if you need to get into that and then we get into the wincon wincon here turbo rex this is kind of like what we modeled our entire deck around specifically because its ability to really utilize beldegore really good it gets it back into the trash it summons the the turbo rex your beldegore comes off out of your now much more in larger increased range of level fours and fives that it could trigger its immortal ability off of and it's just it's a great target to for you not to go neg on the turbo rex turbo rex can also eat butterfly it can also eat mushroom so it can eat a mushroom or it can eat a butterfly or it can eat a i don't like it eating the the cavalier but it definitely can but yeah butterfly is definitely a great option as well too any of these cards that you know the the turbo rex can eat are just all fantastic targets and they always get their ability and they always get their use before you off them so that's why these guys these cards are all great to kind of enable this card this card i really can't speak more about it people to this day were surprised about how the ruling for this card goes you must enter combat so the combat is not a skippable step and because of that this card we've used it you know like i said months back and people were even picking it up at the pro tour and kind of using the same strategy that we were kind of like you know on before anything and uh, yeah it just shows the power of this card and honestly it's it's the only boss monster that i really need to win a game most of the time
next one and uh, you know shout out to you know panda for doing a great job with these gundam cards but we were playing the the, the one of unicorn gundam awakened so definitely a beautiful card i think if you want to pick up your copy so you can definitely use our tcg player link in the description down below and get these for a pretty snazzy price honestly i think everything's down trending so i think it would not be the worst idea to kind of just like anything that you'd like out there with a gundam collab uh, every color got one i think you just you know pull the trigger now because they're really like most of them are really playable and uh, they make for a sweet collector's piece but yeah the unicorn gundam i was able to play him a couple times every time that i did very impactful i was able to get a double attack so he essentially reads as like a double attacker if you're at level five i mean sorry at level three with five cores which is pretty easy to do that's also why we play a, a lot of uh, high green count so we can get him down for cheap but once he attacks what he does is he removes two of his five cores so he leaves himself with three or however many cores you have him if you have him with 10 cores he removes all the way down to three cores and he puts those extra cores into your reserve which will then allow you to enable swift which is the primary reason that you want to do that but when he does that he also restands himself so typically in this deck because i don't play a whole lot of swift i was just using it to get a second attack now he also has a when attacking effect which would trigger twice because he's attacking twice which makes your opponent rest one of their spirits so he essentially becomes a dual attacker double rester which you know is essentially like two attacks and a beam rifle yeah you know? your opponent does pick the targets and you know it happens one at a time but i think the card is just like really powerful and if they are playing void lords which purple does play the purple void lord he becomes massive he becomes like you know 15k or he gains like a bajillion battle power it never really happened so i don't know exactly what the number is but you get the idea but yeah, that's pretty much all our creatures. Now let's get into our nexuses. And for the nexus, we wanted to be a little bit more controlling. You know, we saw, we, we've always been kind of been playing Rocket City more in the sideboard, but with the relevance and the uptick of like the control decks and the, you know, the the, the depths and all that stuff, we've we've seen that Rocket City is a hard counter to, to the depths and that it really counters a lot of these draw strategies with the zero drops and you know the cavaliers and the aglovales and all that stuff so rocket city was extremely powerful even though we weren't really playing white this is kind of like a splash into the deck because it's a very just cheap costed a nexus that is just generally very good and you know it's level two effect was just good enough and obviously it's a white card so give us reduction on the on the dream bomb give us reduction on the ice shield give us reduction on the turbo rex and that's really all we really needed for so the card was great i don't regret maining it and then for the for the remainder of the nexus we had a new nexus in set two impale or forced this card we only kind of resolved a couple times it is pretty impactful what i figured out is that you can just use this to obviously like loop combos and stuff like that so again certain matchups where maybe i want to hold a curse dragon or something like that i don't mind running it out there because now i can just like sack it off at any time by giving its course to something else so for example i would i would play this play the play the curse dragon curse dragon would you know wipe out one or two threats obviously it wouldn't go for like a big widespread play because i would play the curse dragon anyways but I, I'm, I'm okay because i have this out to play this kill one or two threats ramp one or two cores move all the cores onto him kill off my curse dragon then end step you know mill any card from the top of my deck obviously and then be able to buy back the curse dragon so i always have this combo or if i use the bell to go early i'm using the curse dragon early and i really need both of them in tangent i'm able to buy them back with a paler force so it wasn't the main focus of this entire deck but it definitely is good at being able to just be that you know that one of that value one of that you can go obviously multiples on board don't really do much for you but yeah this card is, is it, i i was i was satisfied by it. it it's not the make or break in this deck there's definitely decks that revolve themselves around impaler force but this is not one of them and then for netherworld depths it's just obviously like the best you know the, the best the nexus especially because our win condition was turbo rex as we mentioned before and turbo rex allows us to always get value off of our netherworld depth so we're gonna always be able to force our opponent into combat at least once with one creature and we're always gonna draw with netherworld so typically this card is underwhelming in the control matchups because just pass draw pass draw pass draw pass this allows it to not be draw pass and then you're able to just always out resource them because you're gonna just draw up uh, netherworlds always so also if they have their own netherworld it also works out really well because we're able to you know land a rocket a rocket city 
and if they have another world and we have another world and we have turbo rex we're forcing them to combat we're essentially forcing out a block we're eating their board and because we're blocking they're drawing off their nether world and then they're discarding off rocket city because it is during opponent's turn so we don't ever have to attack and we're always going to make them kind of like cycle through and essentially like deck out too depending on how many nether worlds they have they can, we can force them into deck out so so yeah very very cool and obviously for another world because you know burning force is a card and we have no way of protecting another world so next to round out the deck these are our interactions so these are these are all our magic cards so these are the magic cards that kind of helped us either die or find solutions or you know help us not die sorry so yeah core theft great card especially when you have a bunch of cards off another world this becomes pretty free and it's just a key piece of removal for cards that cannot be interacted with you by going into combat or without blocking and stuff like that so like this is an out to derm dyna you know Madu, like you know other stuff but yeah core theft is always just i think a staple great card also a card that we've been playing forever in the main board and now you know it's kind of just becoming a trend then new card from the the set two this is a box hopper so if you guys are interested in one, getting one of these actually all you have to do is buy a box but if you don't want to buy a box honestly you could just buy the card it's like a dollar or two but very cool card also one of the cheapest ones that feature a gundam collaboration and it's full art so very nice and this one this one's a, a a pretty powerful card so this one for four can make your opponent exhaust two of their spirits i believe you i believe they choose your opponent selects yeah your opponent selects two of their refresh spirits and exhaust them so this is really good on the swing back so because we're playing a, a big bottom end of spirits a lot of times that we have like three four five spirits out so when they go to attack you for like a poke or you know like another reason another thing that we wanted to do is force them into combat with one dude beam rifle the other two so even if they had three spirits they're all defenseless and then we just like either exhaust their exhaust their their ice shield and go for game or we actually just go for game which happened a lot because then we can swing back with turbo rex bounce back one of those cards have them replay almost their entire next turn re-establishing whatever combo or cards that they have and then they have no defense because the beam rifle kind of took that away from them so yeah just a very powerful card beam rifle was might be an issue in some of the more aggressive strategies going forward but we'll have to see that card definitely has playability and or splash ability in every deck and then burning force we just played two third in the side i think it was fine we saw when we needed it cards obviously great like being able to interact with their depths is very important their rocket cities or whatever dream bomb three of cards just great obviously we're not like super heavy white but I think just casting it for five or you know i played this for five so many times i think this card statted even for a five cost is just like still very powerful and then obviously the four eye shields that's pretty obvious nice is the sideboard the sideboard i wasn't like super duper set on but I'll, I'll leave the spicy one for last two feral slash obviously i think you need feral slash feral slash is just so so good against yellow and also against purple technically too because you can pop their if they're playing a rotting swamp version this just bodies them but yeah this card actually ended up getting sided in a lot of the times so you just got to have this card against aggro i think uh then we played the third burning force which which we were talking about so that's three and then we played two suppressions we weren't playing any axe bite or anything like that and you know there's a whole reason why we don't we're kind of off Axe Spider right now, but it's still great without Axe Spider. Just being able to block while in rest mode, your opponent doesn't see it coming, especially if they don't see Axe Spiders in your deck or they don't see a lot of white in your deck. They are just they don't see this coming. It kind of just like blows them out of the game. Was able to win us quite a few aggro matchups. It's just copies of five and six of Ice Shield, essentially. Then we played a Spicy Little Nexus from set two, the giant wood castle keep. Wasn't able to resolve this, but I did play against a purple player that would have literally gotten absolutely shut out by this card if we were able to land it. But during either attack step, when destroyed abilities don't trigger on your opponent's cards. So we can also play this for cheaper because we're, you know, heavy on green. But yeah, depending on how the meta goes, this might be this might be pumped up or even moved to this to the main board if we really wanted to have a hateful anti-meta deck with you know <laughs> rocket cities and giant woods. But yeah, very interesting card, very good card, I think. And honestly, we weren't able to land it, unfortunately. But I think if we would have drawn it, would have been very, very impactful. Triple Exhaust Nexus. I mean, this card is just great. Nobody sees this coming. Funny enough, we played it against a yellow player that was trying to go for game with Royal Port Potion. And it kind of like forced our hand. We exhaust Nexus the whole board and then we ended up winning the game. But this card, typically, you can set it as a burst also. Your opponent will never expect it and you know or you can just keep it in hand because we have a lot of mana ramping ability seven with no reduction is not unfeasible to trigger 
and minus three is also obviously two of these is a way to deal with axe biters just in case you know they do end up axe biter walling you or potentially trying to wall you out of the game you can like cause a board wipe which they don't really see coming and then the last card in the deck was the freedom gundam another amazing gundam card like i said can't stress it enough pick these cards up guys they're just so beautiful and this one funny enough funny stories playing in the final round against the only undefeated i was paired down so it was undefeated versus me i had x1 and i casted this card with a full board pretty much i had like six cards on board he had like three so we played freedom gundam to blow up his three cards and just swing for game funny enough four of our five spirits or whatever were all 4k or lowers so apparently the ruling on freedom gundam is you must kill all 4ks so i literally dark hold myself and you know and, and on top of that didn't summon him as a level three so we didn't blow up nexus <laughs> which he, which is what he does with six cores when he kills a dude and and yeah we we like five for one ourselves and it was it was pretty crazy and thankfully we were able to get out of that and still win the game 2-0 but yeah it's kind of kind of crazy how this card is ruled so just be very careful when you're summoning this card one you want to summon him with six cores so that he can kill a nexus but two make sure when you do that that you're not taking the cores from all your smaller dudes and making them 4ks because he will go after your own army so definitely be very careful when playing this card but other than other than that i, I was able to play this card twice in one game because he dream bombed it back to to not die so we were able to on the second go around of the same game that i five for one to myself replay it kill his you know kill his two guys i think it was and then kill a nexus so super powerful card i really liked it and you know even when block like this guy cannot be blocked or else they blow up a nexus so he was kind of able to come down kill a nexus break the stalemate break his netherworld depths and win the game So that's pretty much the deck, guys. I hope you really did enjoy it. I tried to take my own little twist to it, and I know a lot of it's not standard, but as we're figuring out the brand new format that the that the game literally just came out with um we tried to have a little bit of fun while mixing some of the elements that we already knew were good and we can't wait to continue brewing uh set two meta if you guys want to see any specific builds leave them down in the comments down below and we'll get to cooking till next time